Hi, everyone. Lee Lowell here from SmartOptionSeller.com. Hope everyone is doing well. Today is Saturday, December 24th, 2022, Christmas Eve. And I want to wish all of those of you who do celebrate a very Merry Christmas. And so what are we doing today? Well, welcome back to our weekly Saturday synopsis videos. What are we doing in these videos? Well, just like the title of the video says, we're going to see what the market's going to do. We're going to figure out where the market's headed, where stocks are headed, what's going on in the market. That's what we do most Saturdays, trying to figure out where stocks are, where stocks are going to move. And for us as option traders, and maybe you as an option trader as well, that is the most important thing, getting the direction of the stock right. Because you can't trade options and be profitable with options without knowing where the stock may be headed to. That's the only way to do it. You can't just trade options, you know, independently just thinking I'm just going to trade options. Well, the options value is derived from something else. And most of an options value is derived from where the stock moves up or down. So you have to be aware of what's happening in the stock market. So that's what we're here. That's what I do. Uh, most Saturdays try to help you figure out, you know, where the stock market's going, where stocks are going and try to help you up your options trading game or even your stock trading game i'm a technical analyst been doing this for over 30 years now i watch the charts that's what i do to figure out when it's time to get in and out of trade and the charts tell me when that is so let's just jump right in as we always do almost every saturday and look at some charts and figure out what's going on so we always start with the spy and before i do that let me move myself over here a little bit because uh, not every chart that we look at uh, has the symbol. And people tell me, Lee, can you please move your, your webcam screen so we can see the symbol? So up here in the top left is always where the symbol of the stock is going to be. So you can just look up there. If I don't have it written on the chart here, it will be up here where you can see. So what do we do here? We always look at the SPY first, which is the exchange traded fund for the S&P 500. We look at the S&P 500 as the best overall gauge of the market. And that helps me and maybe you as well see where what's the general trend of the market. The market has trends and we always want to find the right trend and then plan our trade. So we look at the market uh, as a whole and then we go from there. So up here on this part of the screen is the actual chart action the price action for those of you who are new have never watched one of these saturday synopsis videos up here is about two years worth of data on the screen each line is one day's worth of trading so this is a daily bar chart open high low close bar chart of the spy these are not candlestick charts and i try to keep the chart simple as far as technical indicators there are hundreds of technical indicators you can look at i only use four of them on my chart three of which are moving averages i have a 20-day moving average blue line here i have a 50-day moving average right here and i have the mac daddy 200 day moving average when you're looking at a daily chart they're daily moving averages if you look at a weekly chart they are weekly moving averages. so they're all simple moving averages not exponential so those are the three indicators i use up here and then down here is my fourth indicator which is the rsi indicator right here rsi 14 day look back period based on closing prices of the day that's what the c stands for closing prices and it's an oscillator and it oscillates between overbought and oversold levels and here is these horizontal lines this is at the 80 level and this line's at the 20 level you can configure those uh however you want in your whatever your trading platform has and so it oscillates between overbought and oversold and when it gets overbought it could mean that the stock price action it could be ready to roll over and when it gets oversold, it could mean the price action is ready to turn higher. So I use the RSI along with the, the three moving averages to try to help me gauge which way the stock may be headed next. Okay. Nothing's guaranteed. There's no guarantees in trading. It doesn't work 100% of the time. Your timing might be off, but it, it's just it, these things, these items I've over the years figured out these are the only items I need on my chart to help me to figure out where the market's going next okay and in addition to that we draw <clears throat> these 
uh, you can see it's a channel. You see the price action within the blue lines, okay? We've got this big channel here and these smaller channels here. These are hand-drawn. They don't just appear on the charts like the moving averages do. Um, so there's lots of patterns that will show up time and time again. And, and, as, and as we look at more charts, I'll show you some of these patterns. But if you've been following me, for a while, we know last year, the year in 2022, right on January 1st, the market went into a bear mode. And we've been in this downtrend all year long. You can see the top edge of the channel, the bottom of the edge of the channel. That is what I've drawn. And the market has been in that downtrending. You can just see it's going down with fits and starts. It goes up, it goes down, but but overall within this downtrending pattern. So we all know if you've been in the market, if you have long-term holds, holdings, I should say, you know the market's gone down because you see your portfolio values going down. If you have bullish positions, I have bullish positions. I have a long-term portfolio. I have retirement accounts. I want the market to go up. But the market has been stubborn this year, and there's a lot of reasons why. Uh, if, if, if you've been following the market, you know the reasons are we have, you know, COVID still out there. We had these supply chain issues. You had the, the war in Ukraine that's still going on, rising interest rates, rising inflation. All these things have just been hanging over the market all of 2022 and just kind of pushing it in the, you know, the overall downwards. Yes, we have these pullbacks higher and then it gets sold off again. Pullback higher, it gets sold off again. Still encaptured in this downtrending pattern so the market has not been great for bulls this year and us as we do uh, we run two newsletters as well both bullishly oriented newsletters and we've been a lot lighter this year throughout the whole year in taking new positions this is we've had the smallest amount of open positions this year due to the market going down because the market's telling us it's not the greatest time to be in bullish trades so we've been playing a lot lighter that's just how it is let the market tell you where it wants to go we are put option sellers and put option uh, call, put option, I'm sorry, put option credit spreads. And those are more bullishly to directional types of trades. Selling naked puts and selling put option credit spreads. Okay. That's what we do. And if you want some more information on that, you go to our website, smartoptionseller.com. You can see right here. Along the law, the heading here, put selling basics. That is our book. That is our free ebook that we wrote, that I wrote, I should say, about selling put options, why it's so great, why we do it, and why I love put selling so much. Put in your name and email address here. We'll send you an email with a link to the free copy. It's free. It's all about put selling. And that's all that we do here. If you want more information about our services, our two newsletters, Naked Put Selling and Put Selling credit spreads and our one-on-one -on -one coaching we have we have students who come along we get them up to speed make them better traders okay so that's what we do here so once again where is the market headed where are stocks going you know there's there's no no way to spin it the market's in a downtrend and right here you can see this past week past two weeks we came along the top edge of the channel market was going up hit the resistance and then it's come back down within the middle of the channel the path of least resistance has been down and unfortunately i thought right here when the market spy hit 410 got above the channel this day right here i thought we were going to keep going but it ran into some resistance at the top edge of the channel um jerome powell who's the chairman of the federal reserve here in the u.s gave his speech um about the future interest rate hikes he said they're they're gonna keep the pedal to the metal a little bit and you know they're gonna they're gonna stay aggressive they want to get inflation down so the market was looking for a little softer tone in his speech and it wasn't what the market liked so from here the market's just been going down the last two weeks it's unfortunate but we're right back down in this channel now so the path of least resistance is obviously down where where and if is the market going to catch a bid or find some support well we have our line drawn here at 360 
This is the next line of support, just above 360. We had four, 390 as the last line in the sand, and I'm gonna draw this line a little bit more here, bring it out. So here's 390, okay? And we had that as our line in the sand before, because as you look back, 390 was an area of a lot of price action in the past. Here's a lot of price action, here's a lot of price action, here's some and here as well so 390 was basically a pivot point between being support it was support here and then it became resistance here and then support here again it got through it and resistance here and it got through it and then as it was coming down support but it fell right through it so right now it's trading around 382 and it looks like this 380 level you can see it's kind of bunching up right around 380 that's this the next area of congestion where will it go from there um, like I said, the next area is around a little above 360, but we have this one day right here. This, this was 348 is where if the market's going to keep going down, it's going to gun for this level right here, 348. I don't want to see it go that low, but a lot of people are talking about, Hey, you know, 2023 is going to be a recession year. It's going to be bad for the market, bad for the economy. We don't know yet, but a lot of people are talking. We're going to see new lows. You know, will that happen? It, we don't know, but that's the path of least resistance now is lower. It's fallen below. Here's the 50 day moving average. Market's fallen below that. It's below the 20 day, below the 200 day. So the market price action is below all three moving averages and just well within this channel again. So right smack in the middle of the downtrending channel. And until it can until it can break out convincingly out and above this big channel here, it's got to get up here. It's got to get up here like 420 and then keep going. Maybe in 2023 we'll see it. But for now, it's going to be down in the channel. And what we can do is we can even redraw or keep drawing this lower edge here. Get some lines here. So, you know, we can keep going down a little bit here to see where... The, you know, the price action, the price action could fall all the way down to the bottom edge here and then bounce. It's all up in the air. So this again, this is another reason why we've been staying more on the sidelines as far as our trades. The market's telling us it wants to go down. So putting your money on the line for bullish trades isn't the greatest thing right now as far as trading goes. Now, for you long term traders like myself, I will nibble on the way down buy a little bit more for you know my long-term portfolio i like to buy the spy because i get a good smattering of of lots of different stocks so as it's coming down you know if it's going to either come to a support area or down here to the bottom of the channel those are some areas where i look at to nibble on some shares not not going full force just buying a few shares here and there to kind of catch a bottom and if it keeps going down well then i'll look for the next area support beyond that and maybe buy a little bit more. And if it blasts out to the upside, then we're starting to make some money. But for now, the market's still telling us, yeah, you know what, we're not ready to be full bulls yet. So we're, we're staying in this downtrend. Hopefully 2023 will be better, don't know yet. Let's look at the NASDAQ. We use the triple Qs for that. Open it up a little bit more here. So the NASDAQ, 260 is that next line in the sand. Right here, you can see our support line. It's got very close to that this week. Will it drop below it? It's potential. Path of least resistance is down. Get to that 260. We'll see. Beyond that, you have to look back in the past to see where the next area of support could be. This is a weekly chart now. So like I said, here's the 260 level going back here. And beyond that, um, you know, it got below the 200 week moving average, falling below that um you know there's really no no new support area you can see the this area shot up nicely from the 200 week moving average um but areas of support and resistance are where a lot of action price action had been in the past um you know if it drops here you know where is the next support the next real support will probably be right here which is roughly a hundred and hundred and sixty dollars a share right here so if the market drops it can drop another hundred dollars on the triple q's if it gets really bad so this would be the next real major error support it's tough to see that 
Let's go back to the SPY real quick for the weekly. So the next area of real support would be on the 200 week moving average right here. And that's roughly around $365. Still not, here's the low 348. So it'd be 365. And then the next line in the sand would be 348, which is roughly where the market started to take off when it was going upwards. See this nice uptrending channel? And that started right around 348. So let's draw that on the weekly. You can see, so you can see where that support really was. So you use these levels. A lot of people look at the same things. So these numbers tend to, to be self-fulfilling prophecies where people will get in and out at certain pivot points or certain areas of support and resistance. So this 348 level, if you look back, was that pivot point where the market really started to drive higher. So if we come back down here, maybe it'll bounce and start to go back up. You can see on the weekly chart, the bottom edge of the channel, here's the channel, is right, here's the line, the bottom edge, connects right here at that 348 level. So maybe if the, the S&P 500 goes down, it'll bounce at that 348 level. Getting back to the triple Qs, here's the weekly again. Uh, it's sitting right near that support, right around 260. And if it, like I said, if it goes down, it's got a long way to drop down here. But, you know, hopefully th that's a long way. We don't want to see that. Let's look at the Dow, the Dow Jones with the DIA. The DIA, here it is, up here is here's the symbol. This is the exchange traded fund for the Dow. Now, the Dow has been the strongest of the three main indexes, the Dow, S&P 500, and NASDAQ. You can see um, it, it's had, had this nice bounce here, had the double bottom, and the resistance was up here. So uh, this is the week. Let's go to the daily chart. Okay, so here's the daily chart. Had, been, had that nice bounce. We drew this double bottom line a while back. It bounced perfectly, and look, the strong move higher. Found this resistance near the top, that last top in mid-August. It got knocked back down, but it's sitting right on the 50-day moving average right here. You can see it's sitting right on it. So maybe the Dow will be strong next week. Maybe it'll help hold up the rest of the market. So, all right, that's a look at the, the main indexes. Let's start to look at some individual stocks. We tend to look at more popular individual stocks. Don't go through all of them, but we always start with Apple most of the time. And Apple has been a real party pooper of late. Uh, we have a put option credit spread on Apple and it's just, it keeps going down. It last week, it fell through the 135 level. I had drawn this line last week. 135 was a line in the sand and it dropped through it this week. Now it's trading, hovering right around three, 130 is that next level. Let's draw another line here, right at 130. Let's get that in here. 130 level, next line in the sand for Apple. It's really the next line of sand because here was that last swing low just below 130 there. You can see if we go back even further, the next line in the sand, the support area is right at this 122, 123 level. If, so if it drops through the 130 level, it's going to gun for 122, 123, which was this last swing low area here. Uh, we need Apple to catch a bid here to start going higher because a lot of these stocks have an outsized effect on the index. Okay, each stock doesn't doesn't have the same proportion. Certain stocks like Apple has a bigger effect on the overall market. So whichever way Apple moves, the indexes will move proportionately big as well. So we need stocks like Apple and Google and Amazon, these FANG stocks to really move higher if we want the market to go up. And Apple's just sitting on the support here, has fallen you know, $20 a share in a very short period of time. We need a bounce here. We need some kind of catalyst for the market to go back up. Apple has not been, has not been good to the market, I'd say that, and nor to our position as well. So Apple, look for hopefully maybe this 130 level Line in the sand, maybe hold up next week. Let's look at Tesla. A lot of people email me to keep looking at Tesla to keep showing the charts. Tesla is just in this horrible, horrible downward movement. And, and a lot of it is because of Elon himself. Okay, you know, he's taken over Twitter. He's not looking good at Twitter. He's fired 
you know, probably more than half the company. I don't know how they can survive. He's selling his own shares of, of, of Tesla to, you know, keep things afloat. But I think the other reason why Tesla has been going down so much also, I just read this is that they're starting to give some rebates, you know, some cash back on Tesla cars, people buy cars, they're giving you some money off, which they typically don't do at Tesla. So I think people are thinking, well, if Tesla's giving rebates, that means things aren't going so well at, at, at the company. They're not selling as many cars or they they have to offer discounts to sell more cars. So people are also using that information to sell more shares of Tesla. Tesla's closed at 123. I mean, this is a low we haven't seen since, um, let's go to the weekly chart here. Come on, let's look at the weekly. I mean, it just blasted through the 200 week moving average. Um, here was that last congestion pattern. We talk about the congestion pattern, which is a little triangle where the, the, the price action gets real tight and then it explodes one way or the other. So we can see it's sort of getting back into that, this last congestion range, $123, which was right around here, right around here roughly. So, I mean, if it's gonna fall down through here, who knows where the next leg is, the bottom, you know, the next swing low might be. It, this thing could keep going. Uh, it's kind of scary because the the breakout was right around $137 or so when it broke out of this congestion pattern and went higher. And we're below that. We're at 123 now. So we're kind of below this price action here. Um I, I really can't make a prediction or, or a call on Tesla here. I mean, it just looks weak. But the only thing I can say is that on the RSI, it's getting very, very oversold on the RSI. It's below 20. It's at 1981, below my threshold, which is the 20 threshold um, for being oversold. So maybe we'll get a bounce. Maybe Tesla will catch a bounce here. But will it be the bounce that takes it all the way back higher? Hard to say. It could just be a short-term bounce because it's oversold. And when it bounces, then people will start to sell it off again. You know, that could happen as well. Um, but Tesla, you know, not looking so great right here. Uh, it fell through this lo long line in the sand we had, which was a little over $200 here and just blasted through that. So uh, I think the only thing Tesla has going for it right now is this oversold condition. That could give it a bounce, but it, it, it might not last long. It may continue to sell off after that. So keep an eye on Tesla if you have shares there. Let's look at Amazon. So like I said, the tech stocks, the FANG stocks, really been taking it, taking a beating this whole year. 2022 has been a really bad year for tech stocks. Uh, Amazon, here's the symbol up here, AMZ and Amazon. I think we all know the symbol for Amazon. It's just sitting on the support at $85. I mean, it's just, it's, it's hanging in there. Okay, let's go back. Let's look at the, the weekly chart and see where the next support is. So we draw the we drew the long support right around 85. I mean, it's fallen well, well below the 200 day moving average. Um, support after that is probably this this swing low right here, which is the low was, uh, you know, maybe $65 a share, this bar right here. So if it falls through 85, it's got roughly 65 as the next level of support. So keep an eye on Amazon things. I mean, these stocks are going down. Tech stocks going down. Google, we can look at as well. Google falling through the line that we had drawn. The support error falling through that. Where's the next area support? Got to go back to the weekly again. When you start having to look at the weekly to see where the next support area, area is, you know st stocks have been in a downtrend because you got to go back further in time to see where the next support may be. Here's the 200-week moving average falling below that. Where is the next support area for Amazon? It's hard to say. I mean, here is congestion area right here, so it's kind of hovering around that. Next area probably be in here, you know, low 70s, low 70s. And the, then the ultimate would be right around $50, which was this last swing low here that had bounced off the 200 week moving average. So it's hovering just below 90 next area support 70, probably, and then down to 50. I, I'm hoping that we're not going to see these levels in 2023, but you know, you need to be aware of them. You need to know where these, where these support areas lie. Okay. Let's look at some other charts here. We can go through the list, Microsoft. 
uh, in this downtrending channel. Let's. This is the week. Let's look at the daily. Here's the daily. Still encapsulated in a downtrending channel. Had this little up channel here, you know, the last couple months or so, last month or so, and then it dropped back down again outside of it. So the last two weeks since Jerome Powell had that that speech, I think it was on December thirteenth. Uh, yeah, uh, things started to come off again. So that's Microsoft, um, Intel, you know, the chip stocks going down again, Intel, AMD, we always look at AMD still going down, you know, had the little up move here. We had a, we had a, uh, put sell on AMD a naked put sell that we were able to get out of. We made a profit on it, even though the stock's going down. That's one of the great things about selling put options or being an option seller is that you don't always have to be right about the direction of the stock and you can still win. That's why we love selling puts so much. Um, you know, do yourself a favor, go to our website and, and sign up for the free put selling basics ebook. It'll give you insight into a great trading strategy if you, if you don't do it already. So AMD going down micron still now back in another downtrend Nvidia. you know, up here, you can see that you can see the symbol Nvidia just just like the general market in the downtrend had this nice uptrend right here had this nice up channel looked like it was getting ready to go and then jerome powell just crushed it you know got has fallen back down through the up trend trending channel here so the chip stocks having it rough as well let's move this up here move the menu bar up here all right what else we got Nike had a good week. Actually, Nike had earnings came out, just blew things away, and it rallied, you know, almost $20 a share. So Nike was down in this little channel, trading right around 102, and then boom, got up to about almost 120 this past week. So if you have shares of Nike, things were looking good. We've been talking about Nike. It's in this nice little up channel here. We can draw that. Just, you know, you connect some bottoms, you connect some tops, just, to, you know, just to give you a visual of where the price action is. Oops, we don't want to do that. So Nike, Nike bucked the trend, had a good week. What else? What else? We have Netflix. We talk about Netflix. We had a position on Netflix too. We we sold a put spread on that. We took profits on Netflix as it was going up. So as it was going up, put option prices come down. That works out for us because as an option seller, you sell it at a high price and then you try to buy it back at a cheaper price. That's what we were able to do with Netflix. Was in this channel, starting to fall out of it, but Netflix is still looking pretty strong here. Uh, you know, it has a lot of uh, price action to make up. Had these gaps here, gap here, but it has almost, it just about filled this. So it did fill the gap here. You know, Netflix was open here, had earnings and opened here the next day. So it had this big gap to fill as the su subsequent price action comes up and fills the gap, meaning this new price action touches the last high here before the drop. So we fill the gap. So Netflix, the next plan is to fill this gap all the way up here, which is, you know, close to $500 a share. So it's got a long way to go to fill this next gap. But it's, it's, you know, it's certainly moving in the right direction for Netflix. Cisco, uh, I'm trying to find some stocks that are worth really looking at, you know, Procter and Gamble, PG, look at this nice move higher. It has sort of bucked the trend as well. You know, Procter and Gamble is a company where they, they sell things that we use in our everyday lives. So people keep buying these things. So Procter and Gamble going up. Walmart is another stock we look at. It's a great place to get your, your household items cheaper and even your food cheaper. A big part of Walmart's profits are made up of their, the food that they sell. And so you can see it, they've been going up. You know, we got ups and downs, but in the in overall, you can see Walmart's been in this uptrend, which is good. Target, <clears throat> not as strong as Walmart. Uh, had this huge, huge gap down back in May, and then it's just been kind of hovering in this sideways action, but getting down to the 140s. So that's, you know, hanging around the lows there. So Target, not as strong as Walmart. Um, Disney, we talk about Disney too. Uh, getting down to the COVID lows. Let's go back to the weekly chart for Disney. 
here was the COVID lows right in early part of 2020. Um, we could, you know, if you're waiting to get long shares of Disney, as I've been talking in the past, 80 might be an area to nibble on. Let's look at the monthly. Let's, let's go to the monthly for a second here. Move myself just for a second. Monthly. Okay, so you can see the support right around the 80 level. Going back to 2014, early 2014, 80 has held up. And it's got the 200 month moving average as a, you know, a confluence here. Support at 80, 200 month moving average, right at $80. So if Disney comes down to 80, that could be, you know, if you're gonna nibble on buying some shares of Disney, $80 could be your point. It's right around 88 now. So it's another $8 lower. It has to drop in order to, you know, catch it on 80. Will it hold at $80? We don't know, but there's a good chance it will based on past support levels. So Disney may be gunning for that 80 level. Um, what else? We looked at Tesla. So our healthcare stocks, Eli Lilly, just going up. Bristol Myers kind of hanging around, but you know, it had that nice uptrend sideways action for now. Pfizer has a nice little uptrend here. Uh, Merck, Merck doing well, making all time new highs. Johnson and Johnson in an uptrend. So we like the pharma stocks uh, because people are going to need health care and they're going to need the medicine and the drugs that these companies offer. I always talk about the XLV. If you want to get all these pharma and healthcare stocks in one shot, the XLV is a is the healthcare ETF. You can see it right up here. Healthcare Select Spider ETF. Okay? Strong. We've sold put spreads on the the XLF as well, the XLV as well. Okay? PayPal still hanging around the lows. Square hanging around the lows. You know, what's the point of doing all this? Look, looking at these charts. Why are we doing this? People ask me, Lee, why are you looking at the charts so much? Because the charts tell you where the, where the next move may be. And in order to trade options, I need to know where the stock is and I need to know what the stock chart looks like and whether it's worth taking a trade. Okay. Otherwise I'm not, there's nothing for me to do. So I look at the charts and then I to figure out whether it's time to get into an options trade. Costco, we had drawn this congestion pattern on Costco and you can see it's starting to break down to the downside. As the price action gets tighter and tighter within the triangle, it's going to break out one side or the other. It looks like it figured out where it wanted to go to the downside. So it broke out to the downside of the channel. McDonald's, Still hanging in there. You know, McDonald's is not, is not doing bad at all. Keep an eye on McDonald's. Pepsi. We, we, we look at these, we, we look at these um, great dividend paying companies. Look at the nice trajectory of Pepsi. Just bottom left to top right. That's what you want to see out of a chart. Just go higher over the long run. Sure, it's got some pullbacks, but within those pullbacks, it's still moving higher. Love Pepsi as a great dividend paying company. 3M, um, not much there. Okay, so Home Depot and Lowe's. We have a position on Lowe's. We're going to look at Lowe's. L-O-W. Here's the symbol. L symbol L-O-W. Uh, we sold a put spread on Lowe's because we thought we, the price action here was telling us it looks like it was going to go higher. Uh, in actuality, it's, it's gone lower. But that's because of Jerome Powell. But the great thing about our spread is is that we have a lot of downside cushion to help us out, meaning we ha the stock has to really fall far, really, really fall far for us to get in trouble with our trade. Now, we're under a little water on the trade, but not nearly as much underwater as people who have bought the stock and bought call options and, and, and taken outright bullish trades. Those are all not doing great. But when you sell puts, when you sell naked puts and sell put spreads, you can get a lot of downside cushion, which is what we've done. So our trade's hanging in there, even though the stock's going down. That's Lowe's. Um, here's Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway uh, fund. 
you know, he's kind of hanging around, had a little pullback here. But this this fund is made up of Warren Buffett stock um, picks and companies that he owns. Uh, you know, if you want to follow Warren Buffett, you know, you can buy all the shares of stocks that he's that he owns or you can just buy the his fund at three hundred and six dollars a share. Or if you go to our website and you, you have the services tab here, you go to shop. Here's a different options trading strategy that I wrote about how to follow along with Warren Buffett's trades. And this option strategy will allow you to get into all of his trades for just pennies on the dollar. So if you're interested in taking a look at this, you click on here and here's the, the report that I wrote. It's an ebook that I wrote about following Warren Buffett, piggybacking Warren Buffett. You know, he's got to deal with the downturns as well. But over the long run, let's look at the monthly chart for Warren Buffett's fund. Look how beautiful that is. Up, 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 up. Okay, what else? What other stocks do we have before we call call it a day here? Facebook, Meta, hanging around loads. IBM, doing okay. Had a little pullback here, but you can see it bounced right at the 50-day moving average here. IBM, what else we have? Um, Chewy, I haven't talked about Chewy that much. Um, not really doing much. Sideways action. Clorox, wanted to mention Clorox. It had the flat top going. It has the uptrend, and then it had the flat top, which is the resistance. Tried to get through 150, couldn't. Warren Buffett, I mean, um, Jerome Powell spoiled that party. But you can see that it's hanging around the 50-day moving average, and you got the 200-day kind of giving it support as well. So maybe Clorox will find a bid here and go back up. 150 is the level for, for Clorox. Needs to convincingly get above that to see it continue to move higher. We'll look at Colgate. Colgate's still in this nice uptrend. You can draw these channels to tell you which way the price action's going. And you can see, you know, when it pulls back, when it pulls back to the bottom edge of the channel, that could be your area to get long if you're looking to get long. All right, um, we're getting to the end here. Oh, Coca-Cola as well, still doing nicely, has a nice uptrend, great dividend paying company. Uh, Con Ed and, and Southern Company, two utility companies that I talk about doing well also. We had a naked put that we sold on Southern, took profits this past week. As the market goes up, it works out for us. All right, let's call it, let's call it there. We'll summarize with the SPY again. Path of least resistance is just lower, unfortunately, for the index itself. Hovering around the 380 level, you know, next week is a short week. Uh, markets close on Monday, December 26. Not going to have a lot of action next week. It'll probably hang around 380 level. You know, we're taking we're taking some time off next week. Uh, hopefully I'll make a video next Saturday for New Year's Eve, <clears throat> but don't expect too much to happen in the market this week. Probably trade around 380 level on the SPY. All right, let's call it there. Uh, I hope this video has been helpful. I hope this is, this is good for you to, to learn how to look at stocks because if you want to trade options or you want to trade stocks, you got to know which way the stocks are moving. And you, and you got to draw some lines and figure out, you know, where the support and resistance lies to give you a better chance to be profitable with these trades. All right. So if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below. Tell your friends. Send me an email. I'll always answer. And, uh, and I'm wishing all those you, of you who celebrate Christmas have a great Christmas. Merry Christmas. And I'll try to be back here next Saturday for New Year's Eve. All right, everyone. Have a great weekend. Got some NFL games on today, um, and I'll see you all next week. This is Lee Lowell signing off.